In this video, I will talk about time series ARIMA models in R. Before you watch this video, please make sure that you have watched my other video called Time Series ARIMA Models and another one called Time Series ARIMA Models Example. I have opened up the R program here and I have executed it and we will go over it. You can download the program data and see a lot more information on the website. Click on the link below the video. So let's start. The first thing to do is you need to install the packages time series. So remove the sign, install the package, put it in the library. The next thing is to read the CSV file called time series underscore PPI for the producer price index. And this would be our dependent variable. PPI would be our Y variable. And the difference in this variable would be called D.Y. Uh, this is the difference operator. And then year quarter would be denoted as T in the program. So we can uh, do some summary statistics. If you do summary Y, here are the results. Um, you have the mean is um, 60, um, 64, and then the uh, mean for the difference variable is 0.46. The next thing you can do is plot the data. You can plot T against Y and see how the variable looks like. And um, this is how it looks like. Um, and from this graph, it doesn't seem like the variable is stationary. You know, you see it increasing. So let's look at the difference variable. Uh, and that's how it looks like. So it's a little bit more, uh, the mean is a little bit more constant, but unfortunately the variance um, got a little bit bigger. So we're not gonna worry the variance in this video too much. Um, okay, so what are the formal tests then to do, uh, to test for stationarity? They're called the dickey fuller tests and the command for that is adf.test. You put here the, deep, the variable that you're testing. And you can either test the alternative is stationarity uh, or the alternative is explosive. Okay, and then k equals zero is the number of additional lags uh, that you can put, um, put in there. So, okay, so let's look at the results. Here's the Dickey Fuller test, and you have uh, the test statistic is minus 0.79. We don't have any additional lags, and the p value is uh, very large, and the alternative hypothesis is uh, stationarity. So, with this kind of p value, we cannot reject the null, uh, therefore, we have non stationarity. Now, if we have the alternative being explosive, here the p-value is uh, smaller than uh, 0.05 and therefore we need to accept the alternative hypothesis which is um, e explosive which means again that the series is not uh, stationary. So typically other softwares and a lot of the, uh, the data examples that I give you would be in the first one the, that the alternative is stationarity which is a little bit counterintuitive because we want non-significant results and then we say we have stationarity. Okay, so uh, you can run the Dickey Fuller test uh, and these, these commands here will not run with your data so you need to change these. But here you would need to put uh, a regression of the difference variable on the lagged variable. Okay, and you can also have the difference variable on the lag variable and you put the trend variable in there. And again, all of these variables are, are already in my data set. So you would need to have these uh, predefined in your data set or this part of the code will not run for you. Okay, so we have here the summary. Um, you have, uh, these are the uh, coefficients, and this is the coefficient on the lagged PPI. So the dependent variable is the difference, and this is the lagged PPI, 
and we see um, that this is the T value for for that. Now, if you have the one with trend right here, um, you see that this is the coefficient and this right here is the test statistic. So if you remember what we had above, that test statistic right here is what's reported on the Dickey Fuller test. You see this test statistic right here is the same one. So it's coming from from running this regression of the difference um, a dependent variable on the lagged one and the trend and we're looking at this t value to decide whether or not we have stationarity. So again here we have that this coefficient is not significantly different than zero which means we actually do not have stationarity and we need to difference this variable one more time in order to find uh, stationarity. So um, here is uh, the augmented Dickey Fuller test and here we can do, uh, this is the variable, we have the alternative stationarity, and here I have missed the number of other lags, and you see here that you can have up to five lags, and um, again, we need to look at that p-value to decide whether or not we have stationarity. But again, regardless of the number of lags, um, we do not have a stationary uh, process here. Now. If we're running the Dickey Fuller test on the difference variable, we can do this by using d.y for the difference variable without any additional lags or with it. You can see now that um, this is the test statistic, minus 6.83, and that is the p value. And we have that the alternative hypothesis is stationarity. So if we reject it now, we have stationarity, which is a good thing. And also with the with the lag order equals five, we again have the same result um, that we have stationarity. So the conclusion from here is that we need to use uh, the difference variable in our Riemann models. Okay, the next thing that we can do is we can look at the ACF and PACF, the autocorrelation function in uh, partial autocorrelation function. And here you put the variable and that's an ACF um, and you can just run it and take a look at it. And this is the result. When we have a, these, this is at lag 1, 2, 3 and, and so on up to 25. And when you see a very very slow decaying function this is an indication of non-stationarity here. So again, our original variable is non-stationary. We're seeing this in many different ways with the Dickey Fuller test, drawing, just looking at the plot, and now we're seeing it in the ACF functions as well. If we look at the PACF for the for the original variable y, uh, we have a very strong first lag, and then none of the lags are really the correlation, and the other lags isn't significant. Okay, so now that we can look at the ACF of the difference variable and you see now uh, a function that is tailing off rather rapidly which is good and remember that the difference variable is stationary uh, so we have here um, tailing off on the ACF if we're running the PACF we have very strong first lag and then the other lags don't are not significant. Uh, they're outside of the confidence interval here uh, indicated by the blue line. So again this is an invitation indication of having very slow tailing off on the ACF and and just uh, cutting off after the first lag. So that's an indication of an AR1 process for the difference series. So now let's go ahead and estimate a few ARIMA models here and I'm going to estimate all kinds of combinations and we're going to look at them and see uh, which one we will select at the end. Now I will start with the one um, that is um, um, for the original variable and so the way to read it, the ARIMA, the first number here is P, the number of autoregressive terms 
Next one is D, then if, if the variable is differenced or not. And next one is Q, which is the number of legs on the MA component. So here we only have, that's basically an AR1 process. And after we estimate it, here's the coefficient uh, of 0.99, which is very significant. And again, that coefficient is very close to one. This does not seem like a stationary process. Here you can estimate an ARIMA 200, which is same as um, AR2. Uh, this is the commands for ARIMA. You basically put the variable, you put order equals uh, and see, and these are in the order that we've seen on the ARIMA model P, D, and Q. Okay, so ARIMA 200, again, um, you have a uh, significant both the first and the second autoregressive terms here um, but it gives you some warning next one you can estimate an ma1 process uh, here and again we see a look at this coefficient is close to one or you can estimate an arima um, 101 which is an arma 11 uh, again, this coefficient here is very close to one uh, on, on here. So anyway, this is the first models right here that we estimated. I'm just showing you how to do the correct code. So now we decided that we will use ARIMA on the difference variable and this is what we're, uh, what we're doing here. So in ARIMA 110 uh, would have one autoregressive uh, term on the difference variable. So look at how this changed. Now instead of using y, I'm using dy because that, that second one is the difference, the first difference of it. And here actually I'm using a 1, 0, 0. Why? Because I already took the difference here. So I don't want to put the difference here as well. And the results are here. And look, we have a coefficient that's not close to 1 anymore. Uh, which is uh, also a significant coefficient. So this is actually a, a, a good uh, good model, good contender for uh, for a model. And you can look at the AIC criteria, and we're going to be comparing these to decide the model with a with a good fit. So the next one we can do an ARIMA 011. Uh, Here we have an MA component, but again, looking at the ACF and PACF, we determined that we need to have an autoregressive term in, in here. So here, on this one, I'm putting both an AR1 and an MA1 on the difference series. And here we have both of these coefficients. Um, they are, um, um, uh, you know, both coefficients on the AR and MA. So then you could put three legs on the, uh, on the MA term. So this, these are the coefficients on the lags. And there, let me just compare the, to the um, handout that I gave you uh, for the example. Okay. So they're just a little bit different than what I reported in the handout coming from Stata, but they're very close in magnitude here. Um, okay. And here's the last one, the two... Uh, one three and this is also a model that I like a lot uh, it has two autoregressive terms both of them are significant and it has three M8 uh, terms and this one and that one is significant the one in the middle is not and I'm looking at the AIC uh, on this one as a criteria so I really like uh, this this model here and the ARIMA 1-1, one, one, which is this model here. Uh, and as you can see, they have similar AIC. This one is a little bit lower, um, but it does have more terms. This is significant, and we have that one significant. So uh, it's a toss coin which one you want to use. But you can see how this is more like an art than science to when you select the models. So based on what I see here, I would probably go with the RIMA 1-1 or you can go with this one uh, based on everything we learned so far. So the last thing that we can do here is we can forecast uh, the variable uh, in, for the future values. 
So you can estimate an ARIMA model, uh, which is a 1-1. One, one. So this is actually for the original variable. Uh, you can get the predicted values and then you can plot the original variable and then the predicted values and then here you will put a confidence interval minus 2 and plus 2 standard deviations around the uh, prediction. And so I'm going to run this code here. And this is what we see. This was the variable that we had before. And this is the forecast that we had. And this is the confidence interval. So I think it's a pretty good prediction. Now we will forecast the difference variable. So see now we are estimating a REMA on the difference variable here. And we will be predicting ahead. Uh, so same syntax here. And I'm going to run this code. And this is what we see. Um, this was the variable that we had, and this is the prediction here. And see, it has a much wider uh, confidence interval around that. So that was what I had on time series ARIMA models with R. Thank you for watching.